Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Irons Tuning Question of the Week. This week we want to talk about brake pads, and if you're looking at new brake pads, how do you choose the best one? The first thing that I would say about picking a brake pad is you have to understand that there is no one magical brake pad that will do everything. Um, if there's one conversation that we've had to have with people more than once, it's that you cannot find, there's not one pad that will work great in cold winter conditions, work well on the street, not dust, not make any noise, and then be something where you can then drive to the track, put on your, your track wheels and tires, you know, do an aggressive track day and then drive home. It, there's no pad that can do all of that well, unfortunately. So that's the first thing that I would say is you kind of have to know what use you're, you're trying to, to, or what you're doing with the track or with the pad, and then pick the pad that's best suited for the task that you need to use it for. So I'm looking at street pads, what kind of features am I looking for? For a street pan, that's kind of up to you as far as how much of an improvement you want to make over what you've got on your car currently. Um, the, the one thing I would say there is, other than performance on for a street car, noise and dust are two considerations that come up fairly often. A, a brake pan is a compound. They're using a lot of different ingredients that they bring together to make the compound that goes on a pan to get the behavior that you want. And so a lot of the the ingredients that they would put into a pad to make it last a really long time, to be very quiet and to not dust, also prevent it from really performing exceptionally well, giving you a lot of really good initial bite and such. So for a good performing street pad, I'd say you have to be willing to live with a little bit of dust and a little bit of squeaking. The best mannered street pad that we used for a long time is the Hawk HPS pad, their high performance street pad. They've come out with a new pad called the uh, HPS 5.0, and we've run that in a few cars. And for a street pad that is well-mannered, it, it still offers a, a pretty good level of performance. Um, what we're most familiar with here, like Frodo and, and Hot Compounds. Um, the Frodo, I would say their they're, they're best performing street compound is like the 2500 compound. Um, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive than the HPS 5.0, but then that's where like the dusting comes in. Like it, it dusts a lot, but it's a good performing pad. So what am I looking for in a track pad? For a track pad, it depends a lot on the driving that you're doing with it, with the car, and the tires that you're using. The tires are what's in contact with the road, and like if you're using an R compound tire, it's very sticky, has a lot of grip. If you have a lot of grip for acceleration, you're also going to have a lot of grip for braking. So that means you're going to need a, a more aggressive pad to take advantage of all the grip that you have with the tires, but then also, as you're going to be able to use that pad a lot more aggressively, you're also going to be able to put a lot more heat into the pads. What you really want to pay attention to is the is the temperature range that the pad is designed to work within. Uh, more than anything, you need to have a pad that is going to be able to work with the tires that you're using. If you're not using a race tire, if you're using just kind of like a, a high performance summer tire and whatnot, you're not going to need as aggressive of a brake pad. The other thing too is with a brake pad or, or a track pad uh, that you want to watch is is its cold operating temperature. Like where does it really start to come on? Because a lot of the more aggressive pads need a fair amount of heat into them before they really start to, to grab. So that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't use them on the street because like, you wouldn't want to come off the highway, the pad's too cold, and now you don't have the stopping performance even though it is a high performance pad. There's other reasons you wouldn't use them on the street, but we can get to that later. For, for like an entry level track pad, probably the, like the Frodo 2500s, ideally more like the Frodo 111s, 1.11s, or something like the Hawk DTC 30s is a good entry level track pad where it has a fairly high operating temperature um, but it'll still work pretty well without the, without a whole lot of heat in the pan. Um, the downside with them is if you do get faster, you do um, put on more aggressive tires, you can get more heat into them and then you can actually overrun the heat range of the pan. In front of us here we've got uh, some DTC30s that we, that we basically cooked um, on the Pike Speed car. We, we started and we ran the DTC 30s for a couple years and they worked well for us because in Pikes Peak it's kind of a unique environment because when the green flag drops you just go like there's there's no warm up you cannot get the car hot the wheels anything hot it's just green flag and go so we needed a pad that would come on fairly quickly and and on Pikes Peak it worked really well but we discovered when we were doing testing at the track and we were doing you know session after session we got the, the pads way too hot. Uh, as you can see here, basically just completely nuked them. 
that's when we knew that we, we needed something. I think these have a heat range of about 11 or 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. We needed something that was like 1400 degrees or hotter. So that's where we moved right away to the like DTC 60s and 70s, something with a higher heat range. So you touched on it a little bit. You said, don't run a track pad on the street. Yeah. Why not? A uh, number of reasons. The, like, like I mentioned before, the fact that a lot of these pads have to have heat in them to really work. So that's where it can be you know, less than ideal on the street. Beyond that, I mean, they will dust like crazy. Um, generally, the track pads do not do not have anywhere near the same life expectancy as a street pad. I mean, how you how you judge and measure life of pads and rotors for a track car is completely different than what you would how you judge life on a street car. Um, working tens of thousands of miles versus, versus, uh, compared to like working one or two or three track days. The, the more aggressive the pad, the more aggressively it will wear the rotor typically. So there again, like a track pad, it's gonna give you a lot of stopping performance, but it, you know, it's going to, it's not gonna last nearly as long and it's gonna you know, wear through the rotors a lot more. Thanks everybody for checking out this week's question of the week. Remember we do these every week and you can submit your questions via the comments below or our Instagram direct messages. Thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it, appreciate the support. And as always, and until next time, stay tuned with Flatirons Tip.